Most of us visit national parks for just a few days each summer as part of our summer vacation. We arrive, check out some of the main attractions, and then leave to resume our vacation elsewhere. Can you imagine what it would be like to arrive, see the major sites of that national park, and then not go home? Instead, spending the next 20 years exploring that one national park? Well, 20 years ago today, I started that journey. On January 1st, 2004, my wife and I arrived at the edge of Rocky Mountain National Park, exhausted after over a decade of work in Europe's Balkan Peninsula. We came to Rocky for what we thought would be just a short time of recovery, but now, 20 years later, we're still here. After arriving, I quickly realized that I needed some additional income to help support us until we returned overseas. So, I decided to become a nature photographer. However, I knew nothing about photography other than what I had read in this dummies guide that I had on my shelf. <laughs> Nonetheless, I decided that uh, while I'm out here recovering from burnout and doing a master's degree, I'd try to create the largest collection of high quality photos of this national park that had ever been made. What was I thinking? I don't think I had any clue how to rest. Perhaps I don't yet. I knew nothing about photography and knew even less about the wilderness. Yet, ignoring those realities, I dove in and began to learn the hard way. Every day I learned more and more of what I didn't know. Each of those early hikes into the wilderness was fraught with fear that I would encounter wild animals or maybe even fall off a cliff. You know, I wasn't even aware of avalanche dangers back then or so many other things that I should have known about. In those early years, I bought a large, detailed National Geographic map of the park and began to mark off each trail that I hiked, slowly hiking all 350 miles of trail. Then every valley, lake, stream, and most of the mountains. Each year, I hiked many hundreds of miles through the park in the process of making photographs that celebrated the beauty of this place. As I spent countless hours deep in the park at all times of day and night, I began to change. I became so aware of many things I just completely overlooked, not just during my first visit to the park, but during my first years in the park. Slowly, I began to see the cycles of the park, its seasons and moods. I began to notice all the little parts that make up the whole and how they all work together. The various ecosystems of the park began to make sense. And I noticed how the various trees, the animals, and the mountains really differed so much from one another. You look at a mountain and you could soon see how it was so different from the one next to it. And uh, soon those mountains began to take on names and become friends. <laughs> this strange place began to become a home. Eventually, I could wander through deep forest 10 miles back in the middle of the night and know exactly where I was. I could sit quietly at a remote lake, far from anyone or anything, far from any trail, watching the stars at night, unfazed by the noise of a large wild animal walking through the forest behind me. Because I could tell what, what it was and where it was going, I slowly began to feel a part of this wild place. In the process, it invited me into renewed health. Not just physically, though there was certainly that, but the silence of the forest invited me to go deeper into my own inner wilderness, leading me into places I'd never imagined. <laughs> well, as well as seeing the wonder of the wilderness and its healing power in my life, I also saw the huge impact that we are having on our natural world. The damage caused by growing visitation and a lack of education about our natural world, and so much damage from larger regional and global factors as well. I began to notice for the first time how divorced we as a society have become from nature, viewing it as some place over there that exists as a playground for us when we want it. I realized that we have somehow lost complete sight of how interwoven our lives are with our natural world and how we tend to act as if we're the only living beings on this planet. These 20 years have changed me in so many ways. So, be careful if you ever decide to stay around one of these national parks. They can be dangerous places which open your eyes and your heart to things you never imagined. If you're not careful, it will rewire you and your world and turn you into a wild nature lover like me. Well, 
Since I'm looking back at 20 years here in the park, I should mention as well that last year the Rocky Mountain Channel here in Estes Park did an interview with me where we really dove a little more deeply into my background. If you're interested in some of the crazy stories, I'll put a link to that in the description below. Since we're at the start of a new year, I thought I might give you a glimpse behind the scenes of what is happening with this channel and where it's headed. Probably the first thing you notice today is that we have a new background. I'm in the process of having a small studio built in my warehouse. I'll film out in the park as much as I can, but that can be challenging, especially with the high winds, the intense sunlight, and uh, even more, being a one-man show. You know, starting this channel has been a huge learning curve for me. When 2023 started, I knew nothing about video, audio, or anything of the whole editing process. I'm still very much of a beginner, much like when I started photography. Knowing that I had so much to learn, I knew that my first year of videos would be, how can I say it politely, pretty rough. I therefore focused on creating videos that would not be real popular, such as hiking with microspikes, what to expect each month, or trail reviews from less popular areas. I'm intentionally using my first 30 or so videos as practice, and as I get better, I plan to do more popular topics that I know you'll be interested in. My aim with this channel is not to bring more visitors to Rocky Mountain National Park, but instead to help educate the ones who come so that we can all be wiser, safer, and better educated about how we can help care for this special place. Now, much of the content is going to be focused on the first-time visitor, but I also plan to create some more in-depth videos for those of you who already know and love Rocky. I have lots of ideas for those in-depth videos, things I would like to do, such as interviews with park scientists and park staff and looks behind the scene at how the park operates. But uh, all of that is dependent on first me learning the skills to do a quality job and then getting the right permissions from the park to do that. Well, right now I'm planning to put out just two videos a month so I can balance all the other things I'm doing. And on those times when I have extra time and energy, I, I may put out more, but uh, you can expect two a month. One last thing I'll share is that I'm also planning to release a second YouTube channel in February. I know, I never learn. This one, however, will be quite different from this channel. Its focus will not be on Rocky Mountain National Park, but instead on the inner journey. My plan is to release short five-minute reflections on life and faith that help us all to go deeper. If you've read my book, Whispers in the Wilderness, or The Journey Beyond, that will give you an idea of where I'm headed with this channel. Once that channel is released, I'll mention it here and let everyone know. Well, thank you all for watching, and for all of you who put up with my videos for these last months, I really appreciate it. They're going to continue to get better. Count on it. Well, if you enjoyed the content, consider subscribing, as it's really helpful for a new YouTuber like me. Thank you so much, take care, and have a really wonderful 2024. To help you prepare for your visit to Rocky Mountain National Park, visit my website, RockyMountainNationalPark.com For calendars, hiking guides, and other books on the park, visit RockyTrailPress.com And when you arrive, be sure and stop by my gallery in downtown Estes Park, Images of RMNP.